Hey guys, my name's Abe and I'm going to show you around our car that we're taking for our trip around Australia. It's a Land Rover Defender uh, 1997 300 TDI 110. Uh, it's been my first, my first car. Uh, bought it when I was 17 and now it's taken around Australia. So I'll go and show you around it and what I've done. As for the, the tyres we're running, um, we're running the BF Goodrich KM3s. Uh, they'll put on brand new a week before we left. Uh, they're really good. I've had the KM2s before. They're running the size. They're running a 255-85-16 on a zero offset rim. Seems to be the pretty, pretty good uh, combination for the Defenders. the front of the car. I've got the standard bull bar that came with it. Uh, I'm running Nava fog lights and a King's 22 inch slimline light bar. The Dominator, uh, Dominator winch. The headlights I changed out to HID lighting LED lights. Uh, it's probably one of the best mods I did on this car really bright there's almost no need for floodlights anymore um, but they're still in the car up the top i've got the i've got four five inch lights that have been up there i put them on the car very early on i also have a another five inch light off the side as a work light on the other side i've got the iron man 4x4 awning i find it really good it's really really good quality awning it's been on the car now for six years and still going strong I've got the ProRack roof bars, uh, they're currently holding up the custom made boat loader that my dad made 20 odd years ago for his trip that he did around Australia. So I've modified it a little bit to suit my car, but here it is going around Australia. The exact same boat as well is the one that he took. Side steps are already on the car, um, not sure what brand they are, but they work reasonably well, they saved me a few times. I've got a few dings and scratches in them from where they've, they've saved the sills when I was being out for bin. I pulled them off one day and put LED lights under them. Makes it a little bit easier when you're bin and it'll give you some low light while you're camping if you really need it. Um, they do change colours. So when I was doing work to the car previous to this trip, I installed the front runner uh, glass gull wings. I uh, got rid of the original sliding windows because they were pretty well useless. Um, on the, this side, which is the driver's side, I built a custom box for the inside. Uh, for this trip, I got loading gear, all of my recovery stuff, axes and axes, shovels. Um, got jacks in here. I've got all of my D shackles and recovery stuff, as well as a few other ropes and bits and pieces for general general use. Uh, it was the easiest side because when you're in a recovery position, you get out of the driver's door and it's right there. Um, both both boxes have been fitted with LED light up above, and those lights are controlled by a micro switch, which is uh, triggered off the gas strut. So as the gas strut comes down, so you shut the door, the lights go go off. As soon as you open the gullwing, the light comes back on again ready for you to be able to see. On the passenger side, we've got the uh, kitchen. I had previously done this uh, before we went, decided to do our trip. Um, I made it so that I made these cu custom boxes to suit the gullwing windows uh, to make it nice and accessible for everything we wanted to do cooking wise for, for smaller trips. It does take up a bit more space than probably what it would if it was all in a box, but it's a bit of a trade-off. You can have everything organised if you want it easy to come and just grab something out. You can grab a cup, you can grab a plate, you can get do whatever, but it's right there. Makes it nice and simple. Again, has a micro switch on each on the box so that when we're coming in, it, in and out of it at night time, as soon as you open it up, the light's on. As soon as you close it, the light's off. Got all the pots and pans and stuff in here as well. Uh, makes it easy for day trips, or if you want to go out somewhere and you're out all day, 
you want to still be able to cook food or, or make make a decent meal. Uh, I've got the gas cookers in here as well and the pots and pans and everything to, to make it easy to cook. All of our cooking uh, utensils and stuff like that uh, in a pencil case that I bought from Kmart. Tucks, tucks in nice and neat down, down the bottom there. Keeps it all nice and secure so when you're going around the rough tracks it doesn't doesn't shake around and rattle either. When I was doing all of the work with the gulling boxes, I also built this frame. Makes it a little bit easier. We removed remove the single rear seat and made this timber frame and put the drawers in as our, our study, our bathroom, and our medical cabinet. Uh, just makes it easy, nice and easy, simple to get to. Fold up table for when you're doing day trips or you just need a little bit more table space for cooking dinner or doing whatever 20 litres of water in the, in the car so when you're on a day trip you've still got drink um, drinking water so that you can fill up bottles or billies or whatever you need and room down below for f fruit and veggies stuff like that got the shopping shopping bags sit on top of the water dairy nice and easy to get to so when we're out doing the shopping just grab and go in the back of the car here, we've got my 40 litre angle. It has our, our drinks and any excess food that we have. Also, I had to figure out a way to get the outboard in. Uh, it didn't fit on the camper, obviously, it isn't going to fit anywhere else, so it can get on the back as well. It's been put on a, a trolley that we've modified so that it, it can come in and, in and out of the back of the car used with only one person. As you can see, the boxes do take up a fair bit of space. It has narrowed it down to door width, but up on top of the boxes, I've got my my diving fins, George's diving fins, and life jackets all bungeed up there, nice and neat and out of the way. They're not about to come down. Under the floor in the back, I've got a drawer that I drawer that I made. We've got a lot of stuff in it at the moment. It's got all my power tools. Uh, solar controller, cable ties, bits and pieces, electrical tape, first aid kit. It's got a just a miscellaneous drawer, but a very handy drawer to have in the back. On the other side underneath, I've got my main tool bag uh, and a few other spare bits and pieces. Up in further under the floor, there is a another hidden compartment. It's got my secondary tool bag, grease gun and other bits and pieces in it. And I also had to remove the sub to access another little storage compartment which is behind the fridge sits our diving gear and on top of the diving gear is our drone makes it nice and easy to get to we got to just reach over the fridge and pull it out at the rear of the car because i had so much stuff in it it made it quite difficult to reverse the car when you needed to up to the up to the trailer so i installed a reverse camera makes it nice and easy Go straight to the VMS that I'm using in the front. Down lower, get rid of all the March flies. Got the Nava trailer plug and just an Anderson outlet coming from the, the main battery to go back and charge the camper battery. On the back of the car, I've got a custom ladder that I made. It's one of the nicest looking ones that I've personally seen. Um, pretty proud of that. Made, made that when I made my original roof rack as well. Uh, it's my access to get up the top. Got the step down below. Makes it nice and easy. One, two, onto the ladder. Also made another custom bracket for the rear light. The rear light's sitting underneath at the moment, but just, just because the boat's up on the roof, it did used to sit higher. That's why it looks a bit funny. Got a different rear wheel carrier. Um, traditional Land Rovers, they carried it on the door. This one actually carries it on the, the frame and slides with the slides with the rear door so that it's not so that it's not on the door and you get the traditional defender door sag up on the driver's side roof rack we've got the recovery shovel bolt right there nice and secure next to it we've got the max track slides so they're a max track slide that we had to design because originally they sat on the roof rack um, took the roof rack off to put the boat loader on so we made these custom slides to sit underneath it all so they're still accessible but you can put the roof rack back on and it doesn't change your thing, you can still get to them. We also put a put a cage just at the front of the Max Tracks, not really sure what for, bit of firewood, whatever, 
just wanted to use a bit of the real estate that we had there and in between the rear two bars we also put a, another cage for more firewood or I will be putting crab traps up there eventually too. So it just gives another, another storage space while we're on the road. Max tracks are just bolted on by two bolts and they come out these slides both together. They come out the slides, they're held, they're held on at the back. Cage at the front and the cage at the rear of the rear of the max tracks. While we're up here underneath the roof rack, we've got the rod tube. We've got a number of different rods that I'm taking with me, so they're just locked in there nice and neat. All the reels they're stored in the camper, so they just come out with all the other fishing gear when we're going out in the boat or we're going fishing. Anyone that's driven a defender and has tried to clear the windscreen knows that the squirter nozzle doesn't work very well. So while I had the, the dash apart one day, I fitted an extra two squirter nozzles, so I've got one, two and three. Gives gives enough water there to clear the windscreen properly. Uh, again, one of the best cheap mods that you can do if you're willing to pull the dash apart. I plan on doing a fair bit of forbian on this trip, and I have, have done a lot previous as well. Um, as most people that have been for being know, your mud flaps are the first thing that you'll lose out in the bush as soon as you go into ruts or anything like that. Mud flaps come straight off, so I made these custom brackets and bolted them on and they make them removable. They take very little time to actually remove them from the from the car and that way it saves you getting your mud flaps ripped off out in the bush. The mud flaps are held on by two linch pins that are really easy to remove and then the mud flap comes off. So to get the boat on and off, you can either do it by hand or we made it so that you just use the winch on the front of the car. Makes it nice and easy. Put the shackle up onto a lug that I've Weld it on, have it weld that on from the D shackle through so it pulls nice and straight. And then you just use the power of the winch to pull it up and take it down. Getting the boat ready to go. Need to get the outboard out. Outboard secured by a couple of turnbuckles. Uh, makes it nice and secure. Can't come up, can't go sideways. Uh, it's got a, a third turnbuckle here to stop it coming backwards uh, in case of the crash. Doesn't come back and smash the back windscreen. And also at the front, it's got two, two clamps that the wheels go into. Uh, that stops it going up in case of the worst that's gonna happen. And that being the rollover.
out. Once the outboard's out, we have to figure out a way to put our put our little wheels for the uh, for the tinny. So that way you can just put the outboard on, you can put the wheels on the tinny, everything's in, you can wheel yourself to the boat ramp, makes it a little bit easier, nice and smooth. Uh, Dad actually figured out where to put the wheels, we made all these brackets and then all the wheel holes and stuff so they all, all sit in there nice and neat. Gives them a nice snug spot if everything comes out at once. This was an old trolley that we'd made for a previous outboard that we'd used and we modified it with the with the arms on it to come in and out of the back of the car nice and easy. Boat back on, reverse procedure, stand it back up, put the winch on it, and pull it up. In the front here, running the uh, the mud console. When I had the dash pipe, put the mud console in, put a new stereo in, fitted the red arc brake controller, so we can take the take the trailer. Navigation-wise, running the VMS and the Garmin, uh, just general general use sat nav. Up the top, anyone that's driven a Defender knows that the uh, air cons aren't real good, so I installed these little little fans up here and also made this custom gauge console with EGT, boost, water, and volts gauge. When I bought the car, it had a Waco cooler in here. It didn't, uh, didn't work very well, flatten the battery every time you wanted to use it. So, made this box, new center console, found a, uh, a pre-molded cup holder, because I wanted cup holders again. Tough it all, made it. On the inside, it's got our Australia map where we're logging where we've been. On the inside, we've got two different compartments here. One for wallets, keys, pencils and pens and stuff so we can write down what's going on. Down further, we've got the uh, winch controller, handheld UHF, some, uh, thermo gun, a few pocket knives, money, wallets, head torch, random charges. All stuff that's just easy to access when you need it. Because in the back where I had to had to remove the sub to give myself a new new little spot to put spare parts, the sub now lives right behind us in a box that we that Dad and I made the night before we left. So it's it kicks the seats pretty well when it sits right behind us. In the back seat of the car, we uh, wanted to keep it fairly neat and tidy, uh, just so. We could still put stuff in here, put our laptops and stuff that we don't want to leave in the camper. Up on the aircon screen and cage that I made, we've got the cameras that are chained up there. One, two, and the spear gun also hangs up there. It's just nice and neat, out of the way. Gives me, gives me access to still look out the back of the car through the rear view mirror. Uh, aircon screen, so just try and help the aircon that's in here. Up on the roof console, this roof console was in the car when I bought it, but I've added a few things to it. We've got the LED lens of P17. Uh, we've got a spot up there for maps, a couple of lights. Running the Uniden UH5000. When I first bought the car, uh, it didn't have a roof lining in it. Uh, it just had aluminium and 
it got quite cold during winter and quite quite hot during summer so i wanted to try and figure out what i could do and i managed to find some stuff at clark rubber and it was 10 mil foam with an adhesive back and aluminium on it and i stuck it up onto the roof where the aluminium was and it's made a dramatic difference in noise reduction as well as the temperature inside the cab thanks for watching the uh tour of our car uh it will serve us well around australia and if you uh subscribed you'll see if any problems come up and how we fix them thanks for watching